Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Ah, nostalgia. It was so much better back in my day. If there's one thing that's going to sell, it's something that you know people have loved beforehand. A safe bet, if you will. Instead of building on and creating things that are new, let's put in place that once successful framework and just do it again. Under new graphics, new ports, tweaked features, slight additions, or for a new price tag, of course. And fans of games tend to be quite at the whim of the developer. Each successive title and addition to the collection and the latest in the must play series. But for a long time now, game developers across many a genre have wasted no time to make sure that the games that you grew up with are being brought back to life, sometimes with a great deal of care and attention that lead old and new audiences alike to rediscover a relic of the past, now with much less clunk and much more spunk, sometimes you wonder how on earth this was ever given a proper look at and somebody said, yeah, that's about ready to go. Ah, who am I kidding? We know why. It's for shareholders and quarterly reports, don't we? Maybe this whole video is one big projection from a person and a channel where content has focused around the re-release of a game for a long time, but I've gamed for much longer than this, and it didn't start with MMOs for me either. I think back to it now when so many of the games which I grew up with have been remastered or re-released now. Is the safety net of a re-release always going to be enough for the game developer and player alike? Or should the future of potential series instead be placed more in the limelight? Should that time and expense be put better elsewhere? Let me tell you a little story of some of my experiences with re-releases and remasters. Spyro Year of the Dragon on PS1 was the first game I ever 100%ed. I love the variety of the levels, the progressions through different homeworlds which were centred around seasons, the collector font theme, all the different games within the game like the arcade style shootout level, skateboarding, you had swimming, you had flying, it did a little bit of everything under the guise of the neat package which makes Spyro Spyro. And I remember the one final gem I was trying to get in the main game on that level spooky swamp behind some bars. I was stuck trying to figure out how you get that thing forever. I even asked my mum if she could work it out. And I think it was after a lot of trial and effort I finally charged the wall behind the bars and that turned out that's what you needed to do. Spoiler, I guess. The point is, I played that game a lot, so when I heard that they're going to be remastering the Spyro series, I was hyped to say the least, and to give the other two games in the original trilogy a go as well, which I hadn't played to the same extent. And it was at a friend's house where I first gave it a go. I hopped into the world, there it was, Spyro in all its updated glory. Went onto the first level, charged into some vases, set some things on fire, went into sunny villas, had a look around, did a bit of the skateboarding, and it just felt kind of meh and within the space of 15 minutes i felt as though i was kind of done with it it wasn't a bad game by any stretch of the imagination the animations were great the world was colorful and vibrant everything was in place perfect to my memory it was just the game itself the gameplay and it was me what made the game back then was still good enough and in place but these days i wasn't invested in that anymore Tomb Raider 1 was another game which I spent a lot of time on, as well as just cumulatively between Tomb Raider 1 all the way up to number 5 Chronicles, we don't talk about after Chronicles for Tomb Raider, and once again I heard of plans for that to be re-released, which is different from a remaster, I suppose I should have mentioned this earlier. A remaster being a graphical and sound upgrade, a re-release is more of a reimagining of the game. And Tomb Raider 1 was reimagined as Tomb Raider Anniversary, a celebration of the start of the series that in contrast to Spyro, was pretty good. I liked it, mainly due to the tank controls of TR1 being done away with and climbing and getting around just felt so much more smooth and accessible, as well as some other things in particular which were smoothed out a little bit. And I suppose I'll have to give classic WoW a mention. I talk about it now and again on the channel, don't I? It's in a funny spot when you think about it as in a remake versus a remaster because it's not really either of the two. It's quite literally taking a game from over a decade ago and just putting it out again with some back-end changes which are not so visible to the player, such as the increased server size or the Warden from Legion to get rid of bots, which definitely works. If it were a remaster, I'd expect different character models, animations, spell effects, updated sounds and a soundtrack. We don't have those. For a remake, there would be new abilities and talents, dungeons, raids, battlegrounds, or zones. We don't have that either. Well, I guess that makes it a little bit closer to a remaster than a remake, but ever since the days of Nostarius to Elysium, Light's Hope, and all the fan servers to the release of Classic, of the game, and beyond, many players have realized that, in fact, they don't really just want a copy-paste job, but actually a reimagined experience, a classic plus 
version of the game, if you will. And since Classic has been re-added to the PTR recently, a lot more discussion around this has been flaring up, and everybody seems to have their different vision for how the game could be improved and just made better. Blizzard also did a survey some time ago to gauge interest, and I'd like to talk about this too, but not in depth here, not now. This deserves its whole own topic. The Diablo 2 Resurrected open beta has just come to a close pending its full release next month, a title which for a change I don't have any nostalgia for. I never really got fully into ARPGs, I just went from MMOs to MOBAs, back to MMOs again. And from what I can tell about the game, aside from the industry standard beta, which is really an alpha that we're using to advertise the game through YouTube and Twitch for free, it seems kind of meh. Like Spyro, not bad by any means. It looks great and I'm sure as a D2 fan it's going to be a nice trip down memory lane and probably will be a fun first playthrough through to the end game. But once you hit the end game, solved. Best farm spots, known. Best builds and item combos have been fully mapped out for years and years. It doesn't look like there is anything which will truly make it exceptional anymore. This is similar to what classic WoW fans are really starting to experience. The game is good and it scratches the itch and meets demands of what so many players want from an MMORPG. But what a remaster can never do to an old player is offer anything new, which sounds kind of very dumb and obvious. But if the Rubik's Cube comes to you solved, what is there left to do? Are you going to try and jumble it up and make it a mess again and resolve it? You're going to put it on your shelf to look at and say, hmm, that looks nice. When WoW first came out, it completely changed the landscape of the MMORPG genre forever and still has lasting impacts on it to this day. Despite changing little within Classic, the population of it is something absolutely staggering that any developer would die to have on their game on launch day, let alone on a remake with no new content planned and not much to do for many players after nearly three months. Diablo 2 for Resurrected feels much of the same, another hugely influential game and the prequel to D3, which to this day is still one of the best selling PC titles ever and has set the tone for how many other ARPGs set up their UI, inventory, gearing and just gameplay patterns in general. And as for both of these, they still hold up well due to how much of the landscape of gaming has morphed around their image as players have flocked back to try them again in their millions. And if you're a fan of the MMO or IRPG in any capacity, you've probably tried them at some point, not just the remakes, but the originals. But for today, these games are not exceptional anymore, nor are they groundbreaking in what they deliver, nor should it be expected for a lasting legacy to be built around them once again. It's just a nice visit down memory lane, perhaps to see things again or other bits that you know you had missed the first time around. Of course, Blizzard really has to get Diablo 2 resurrected right as well, which considering the beta was missing a number of classes and the majority of the game one month before release, and the current track record of, uh, well, this thing, the train wreck that was Warcraft 3 Reforged a while back, fingers aren't exactly crossed, but I'm hopeful the fans of the series will get something they'll be able to enjoy. Different developer though, so it's going to be better this time, right? Right? And for Blizzard, if you look back, they've redone World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, they've re-released their arcade set of games, their words, such as Lost Vikings and Rock and Roll Racing, which were announced at BlizzCon 2021, Hearthstone and Overwatch have contained game modes emulating earlier versions. And if we look over Activision, Modern Warfare has been redone as well. Surely they're going to run out of stuff to do again soon, right? Surely gaming is going to run out of stuff to do soon enough, right? Are we going to see Fortnite Classic in 10 years from now? Oh, building was so much better back in my day. Can the charm of nostalgia work just so strongly again and again and again? Well, in some cases, Yes, it certainly can. You may think Blizzard has re-released a lot of their games, but oh man, you haven't seen anything when it comes to Bethesda's one game wonder Skyrim. Released 11, 11, 11. It's coming up to its 10 year birthday all too soon and you'll never guess what. But Todd and the boys are re-releasing it. Again, they're probably going to sell millions. Again, they can't keep getting away with this. And you know what the anniversary edition has, including the base game, the special edition, the DLCs? Fishing. Yep, fishing. There has to be a dozen mods out there which do this for free, but what the hell, let's chuck a few more dollars at Todd, shall we? Counting all possible releases, if we're including ports, that is, it's well over 10, including Bethesda literally doing a meme release and putting Skyrim on Alexa. No, really, voice-activated Skyrim. It's a thing. Trust me, people, I couldn't make this up. 
And that's pretty damn impressive for a decade old game to be going this strong. A single player one at that. Unique, almost. And Elder Scrolls 6 will follow up one year later too. We'll see if that lasts just as long. Doesn't exactly put much of a fire under the developer to make something new which adds to the series, innovates or makes improvements to complaints commonly found in the original game though. Maybe this is a good thing that the game can be propped up by its past while the dev works away on its future. So much extra time and effort can be put in at a time where it's all too common to see highly anticipated games rushed out to disastrous launches to appease suits and spreadsheets. Or maybe it's easy to justify outsourcing a previously successful title whilst you watch the dollars roll in, not feeling all too pushed to get the next big thing in the works. Because oftentimes when I see release or remaster, if I hadn't played it in the past, I'm just not really too interested and I'd rather see the dev put their time into something new rather than trying to re-deliver the old again. Like when FromSoft finally remastered Dark Souls 1 so it's playable on PC, I'd already ended up trying it a few years ago back when the community had DS fix because back then FromSoft said nah CBA lol just get a console. I'm a lot more interested in Elden Ring for example than doing that thing again. The roast into the past however is a hard allure to resist and as started with it's a surefire way to almost know for certain that something you're having to put frankly much less time and effort into redeveloping since a tremendous amount is done already like the story, enemy design ideas, track placements, level design, the musical score, which all have to be remastered of course, but the base ideas, the foundations are all laid for you. It's an easy plot to build a gold mine on. In fact, for a remaster or remake to not have a good degree of success is much more surprising than for it to do well. For developers, redoing successes of the past will always be about, I'm sure. As for us, the buyers, if it keeps printing monies for the devs, I don't see it becoming any less popular and for newer titles to take precedent. And you might find all of this a bit strange from a guy who plays a hell of a lot of classic WoW. The raids are why for me, that's the bit I missed back in the day. That's what I'm revisiting. In fact, I would prefer it if they took all this time and effort trying to get the new stuff as good as it can be. Be it for retail's next expansion or content for classic that doesn't purely just follow the blueprint of the original game but aims to take it in a new direction within the spirits of it. Do I want to do TBC PvP? No thanks. Do I want to go and farm another Drake when that comes out in 2022? Yeah, I think I'll pass. When you take a look across gaming as a whole, you realise how incredibly common it's become to re-release and remaster, as well as why that makes sense, and it's such a safe choice to do. It feels to some extent the appeal of the old might be starting to wear just a little bit thin. It has been many years now since this has become a commonplace. Maybe that's just me though. The thing is, I know what I like from the past. The developers know what players like from the past. But the future, the fresh, the new puzzles to solve, the new builds to figure out, the unknown. That's where the true intrigue will always lie. I don't think cashing out on the past is going anywhere anytime soon be it at the expense of the future, even though I would like to see it going that way. That's the video though. Let me know your thoughts and how you feel about remakes and remasters and whether they do have any effect on anything new coming out potentially as well. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one very soon.